the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. As we enter the sacred mysteries this morning, we bid farewell to Bishop Ken Howell as he departs Brisbane for his new mission as the Bishop of Toowoomba. He goes in response to Christ's call, and Christ himself stands among us here as we bid farewell. We come to Christ wounded by sin, but finding in him the mercy that is our healing unto eternity. So let's greet the Lord Jesus as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be shrouded in the darkness of error but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. It happened that God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. Rising early the next morning, Abraham saddled his ass and took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. He chopped wood for the burnt offering and started on his journey to the place God had pointed out to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there we will worship and come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, loaded it on Isaac, and carried in his own hands the fire and the knife. Then the two of them set out together. Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, he said. Yes, my son, he replied. Look, he said, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, My son, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Then the two of them went on together. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he bound his son Isaac 
and put him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hands and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Then looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham called this place, the Lord provides. And hence the saying today, on the mountain, the Lord provides. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. Abraham went back to his servants, and together they set out for Beersheba, and he settled in Beersheba. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus got in the boat, crossed the water, and came to his own town. Then some people appeared, bringing him a paralytic, stretched out on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. And at this, some scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing what was in their minds, Jesus said, Why do you have such wicked thoughts in your hearts? Now, which of these is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, get up and pick up your bed and go off home. And the man got up and went home. A feeling of awe came over the crowd when they saw this and they praise God for giving such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The thing that they always noticed about Jesus was his extraordinary and very unusual authority. He speaks about his own authority when he says that I will show you that the Son of Man, I, have authority on earth to forgive sins. And then having seen what he does to the paralytic, The people agree, they praised God for giving such authority to human beings. And if you look at Jesus in the Gospels, one of the extraordinary things about his strange personality is that he is so extraordinarily authoritative without ever being remotely authoritarian. To be authoritative is to have the capacity to both heal and to forgive, as he does. To be authoritarian is to be like his opponents who say he is blaspheming, and that is a refusal to heal and to forgive because they need to maintain the system upon which their power depends. True authority, the authority that comes ultimately from God alone, anything else will become authoritarian. True authority in the human being comes from the kind of deep listening to God that becomes faith, such as we see in Abraham, in the remarkable story that we have heard of the binding of Isaac the son upon whom everything depends, including the reliability of God to his extraordinary promise. This is the God who came out of nowhere for Abraham and who asks him to do the strangest thing imaginable, and that is to sacrifice the boy upon whom everything depends. For Abraham, the question is then, is this God just like all the other gods? that demand child sacrifice, which was widely practiced in the world of the time. You sacrifice the firstborn of your children and of your beasts to ensure the ongoing fertility of the family or the flock or the herd. The logic of it was cast iron. So there was nothing unusual about a god asking for the sacrifice of the firstborn. But Abraham had thought this god is different And the question now is, is this God different? Or is he just the same and ultimately just as cruel as all the others? Abraham listens and he trusts 
in a way that shows him how different God is and that gives him the kind of authority we associate with the one we call our Father in faith. Today we say farewell to Ken Howell, who has been so intimately part of the life of this cathedral for a long time and the life of this archdiocese for even longer. And I guess as we bid farewell, we ask the question that Isaac asks, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Well, here he is. But we also pray that the God who gives us the lamb for the sacrifice always, and if a bishop is not that, he's in trouble just by the way, but our prayer for Ken, our brother, as he goes forth from Brisbane to Toowoomba, is that he will be a bishop who is truly authoritative, who up over the range has the capacity to heal and to forgive. In other words, that he will be authoritative with the authority of Christ, and this authority in him will take root precisely because he has learned through the years to listen to God, to open the ears of the heart, and so to become a man of faith a true son of Abraham. Let's turn now to the God to whom we listen and who listens to us. Let's pray in the power of faith. For Pope Francis and all bishops, that they may be granted the gifts they need to be true shepherds to Christ's flock and to lead with wisdom and integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the church and its people, that they may be true to their calling to, pre to be prophetic witnesses to the gospel of peace in a world fraught with injustice, crime and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Ken, as he assumes his new pastoral ministry in Toowoomba, that he will be granted the strength and the courage to continue to prepare the way of the Lord in his humble service of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been touched by the generous spirit of Bishop Ken here in this cathedral precinct over the years, that in gratitude we will continue to hold him in our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across this land, together with all non-Aboriginal Australians, that together they will be granted the spirit of understanding and counsel to work for reconciliation, justice and healing in Christ's name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for the living and for the dead. Listen to us now and answer us for the sake of Jesus, your Son, who is the Lord of life and death for ever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sac sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them and entrusted the whole world to their care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, they might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience they had lost your friendship, you did not abandon them to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into the one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, his assistant bishop Tim, me your unworthy servant, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Many of us look forward to joining Bishop Ken in Toowoomba next Tuesday when he will be received by the diocese and installed as its bishop, and our prayers accompany him in the meantime. We also have the chance to join him for morning tea after Mass, so everyone is invited to a particularly festive morning tea. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.